Hello, uh, welcome back. As we are studying, in the last video, uh, we have actually made a mistake, uh, not a big one, but yes, since you can see, here it is squared, isn't it? Uh, so, this will become squared. Okay, uh, please make this correction as I have made a silly mistake in here. So, in the bottom part, that is in the denominator, it will be r squared. Please make it uh, correct. And finally, uh, we will be uh, moving towards as we have known that uh, we will be moving towards this resultant thing. So, uh, let's proceed. So, we'll be finding out the resultant forces. Okay. So, the resultant forces are there since there are four events, isn't it? In our case, it's four events. So our result, resulting forces will be FR1, FR2, uh, FR3, and FR4. So to find out, uh, as we have earlier discussed, uh, in the same position for each of the rivets, there are two forces acting, that is the primary shear force and the secondary shear force. So, due to which we will be getting a resultant force for each of the rivets due to two forces acting on the, on each of the, I mean, on each of the rivets. So, if you consider, if you consider the, if you consider uh, the first rivet, uh, let me change the color, okay. This one was our P1 4. This is for this first relay. Okay. And there is a this is a distance from the CG where perpendicular force F1, which is a secondary shear force, was acting. Isn't it? So we will be uh, using the parallelogram law of forces. Okay. Uh, to find out this resultant thing. Um, so let's let me do the thing. So here we have resultant force F R one for the rivet one. This uh, R is showing the resultant force F and for the ones for the this thing. So what I have done is suppose this is the force Fs1 and this is the force Ps Py sorry Py4. So in the parallelogram law of forces we have determined uh, the Fr1. So, as we know, FR1 square will be equal to P by 4 whole square FS1 whole square 2 into sorry, 2 into two into uh, P by 4 into FS1 and suppose this degree uh, and uh, this angle is theta so it will be cosine of theta okay. so this will be our fr1 in, in such a way uh, we can find out fr2 fr3 and fr4 in our case uh, all the 
four radiates are at equal distance from the center of gravity. But what we should know one thing uh, that uh, not in every numerical problem we will be having this same distance. But the radiates which are at the far distance will be producing uh, greater uh, resultant forces. Okay, we have to keep that in mind. And suppose uh, our FR1 is the uh, FR1 is the uh, um, FR1 is the maximum of all. Okay. So one condition is that we have to find the shear stress and the maximum of all this F. FR1, FR2, FR3, and FR4. Suppose we are considering uh, we have got FR1 is the maximum. So it will be for the cross section, uh, circular cross section will be d squared. And this value of tau should be less than tau li. That will be almost given in the equation. If not, uh, you will be given the value of. SYT and factor of safety from where you can actually find the tau alloy. So in such a way it will finally validate means uh, uh, so your riveted system in this case so that uh, it doesn't fail so that uh, it doesn't fail by shearing so that it has a sufficient shearing resistance so that uh, for that I mean uh, tau allowable that is you have find out or the given in the question or in the numerical problem should be greater than tau that you are finding using fr1 or the maximum of resultant forces by pi by 4 t squared. So this is all about centrically loading uh, repeated joint. Uh, one more thing uh, it's not that always you will be getting uh, forces like, uh, remitted like that, it, it may be all the rivets may be in the same direction, means in the same row. It can be even like that. So, depending on the problem, you have to find the, you have to uh, understand how the secondary shear force and the direction will act and accordingly you have to find the resultant forces okay and uh, this is all about this thing you can also find out the theta that is cosine value you are using uh, this thing that you are using here in here you can also find out the theta suppose uh, the our system is quite like that, isn't it? This angle is theta, and this distance will be given, and this distance will be given. This thing and this thing. From this, using the trigonometric value, using cosine. Uh, that is, uh, you, you can find the value of theta and put it in here. Okay, so this is all about uh, the centrally loaded joint. I hope you can make some concept clears uh, here, and uh, thank you for that.